up, everybody, and welcome to The Horror Within Me, a podcast dedicated to the world of horror. I am your host, Eric, and each week I'm going to rate and review a new movie or TV show that falls within the horror genre. Now, this is a show for horror fans hosted by a horror fan who's just here to share my opinions and experiences with my fellow horror friends in hopes that you may gain something new to watch or not watch and really just talk about all things related to this beautifully dark and spooky world that we call horror. So if this sounds like a show for you, stick around. We're going to have a lot of fun. So let's get started. Hi, and welcome back to yet another Spooky Sunday episode of The Horror Within Me. I am your host, Eric, and this is a podcast where I do horror movie reviews and interviews. If this is your first time here, welcome. You're joining us on a very special episode. This is the final of the Halloween Favorites October series. So if you haven't been listening, there are four previous episodes where I am highlighting my five favorite movies to watch in the Halloween season. This week's episode is dedicated to Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers. Now, Halloween 4 just hits that sweet spot for me during the holiday season of Halloween, as does many of the Halloween movies. You can really watch any of them, but there was just something about Halloween 4. The opening credits are very different than what we're used to for the Halloween films, I think. Um, There's the trick-or-treating. There's just a lot of really fun things that this movie brings to the Halloween season. And I always also fondly remember seeing Halloween 4 and 5 even more than the original on AMC Fright Fest during the Halloween season. So it just connects a lot more with me, and I wanted to share that with all of you. That being said, before we get into some of the content of the, some of the information on the movie, I'm going to take a second and do this week's terrifying trivia question. This week's terrifying trivia question is a multiple choice, and it is, what was the name of Jamie's dog? A, Max, B, Buddy, C, Sunday, or D, Rocky? Stick around to the end of the episode to find out. Okay, I'm just going to take a second before we jump into the information again and just talk a little bit about a little background on, again, why I picked this movie. I think it was the fact of I was a small child when I first started watching Halloween. And this, you know, yet while Tommy Doyle and Lindsay Wallace were in the original, Michael didn't really bother them. He was after Laurie and her friends. Whereas in Halloween 4, he's actually after his seven-year-old niece. And so it was different to see a child my age in a horror movie being terrorized by the boogeyman. So I think that's what kind of drew me a little bit more to to Halloween 4. Yes, Yes, we know the mask. People are just like, what was that mask? I think it's even turned into this whole like debate about it. Because I've seen on TikTok that people are like, oh, I love the mask or I don't love the mask. Me personally, it's grown on me. And the scene where Jamie is dreaming, the dream scene is just iconic. <laughs> when he grabs her foot from under the bed, it's like a child's worst fear. And let's not even let's be realistic. It's not even just a child's worst fear. I'm 37 and I would be terrified if my bed had even could be under there, but I have like drawers. So there's no way that anything could be hiding under there, which is grateful. I'm grateful for. Um, I actually am also super excited because I just ordered a bunch more of my Michael Myers mask for my collection and from trick or treat studios and they should be coming sometime next month. And then I'm only missing one, which would be the H2O version, which they're currently sold out on. So I'm going to keep an eye out to see when they are back in stock to buy it. So that way I can complete the collection of original timelines, not original timelines, but the original entry mass for each um, 
movie. But enough about me. We're here to talk about Halloween 4. Let's talk about the information on Halloween 4 and IMDb. The synopsis is... Ten years after his original massacre, the invalid Michael Myers awakens on Halloween Eve and returns to Haddonfield to kill his seven-year-old niece. Can Dr. Loomis stop him? Halloween 4 is starring Donald Pleasance reprising his role as Dr. Loomis, Danielle Harris in her first role as Jamie Lloyd, Ellie Cornell as Rachel Carruthers, Sasha Jensen as Brady, Kathleen Kinmont as Kelly Meeker, Bue Starr as Sheriff Ben Meeker, and George P. Wilbur as Michael Myers. Rest in peace, he recently passed away. He also was Michael Myers in Halloween 6. So if you didn't know that, now you do. Halloween 4 was released October 21st, 1988. It was directed by Dwight H. Little, produced by Paul Freeman, written by Alan B. McElroy, has a rating of R, a runtime of 1 hour and 28 minutes, falls under the horror and thriller genre. Tagline is, 10 years ago, he changed the face of Halloween. Now he's back. IMDb rating of 5.8 out of 10, under Rotten Tomatoes, the tomato meter of 39%, and an audience score of 53%. Now, let's back up like we always do. Um, Let's jump back in. I was super excited that Donald Pleasance, he made the Halloween movies when Jamie Lee Curtis stepped away from them after the second one for a while. So him being in the now curse of thorn trilogy or jamie lloyd trilogy either way you want to look at it, even though she kind of but anyway i love that he reprised the role he did such an amazing role as dr loomis and i don't think they could probably like re i don't like the word replace but they could find another loomis and probably could do a really good job just as i believe they could find another freddy krueger that would do a really good job we just have to be open to it but we have to be respectful of the original actors in those roles and the, the and what they brought and that and accept that just like if any reboot or remake it's not here to replace the original or be better it's just to give a new fresh set of eyes and perspective. I think that we could do that with the Loomis role, but I'm so, so, so grateful to have lived in a time where I've got to experience all of the originals first. Donald Pleasant was amazing. I got to meet Danielle Harris. I'm sure if you've been listening, you know how much I geeked out and I'm looking at the picture right now on the wall from Monster Mania almost a year over a year ago and I couldn't talk and I would love to to have the opportunity to meet her again and actually like speak. Um, but she was just like my favorite final girl. Cause like I said, as the child, I related a lot to her and I would love to have the opportunity to even interview her, but I'm too afraid to even try to reach out to even figure out how to do that. Um, looking, I also love Ellie Cornell. I love Rachel and we're not going to talk about it because it's going to piss me off. We'll save it for the episode when I do one on Halloween five, but what happened to her was a travesty. It was tragic and it was unnecessary and done very poorly. And that's all I'm going to say. Rachel on Halloween four was our big sister. She was everyone's protector. She did the damn thing. She, if it weren't for Rachel, Jamie would not have survived. And that's fine because Jamie's seven. But Rachel really, you know, even like looking at the other kinds of like women, like uh, the sheriff's daughter, Kelly, she was very promiscuous. And like Brady was like, they're all teenagers. And I get it. Rachel was different. Like she was concerned about the boy and she wanted to go on the dates, but she, when the time came, like she did what she had to do for her. It's not even her blood sister. It was a foster sister. Like, I don't even think she was adopted into the Carruthers family because they called her the foster sister. So I really, really think that Rachel was a huge part of Halloween four. And I think that they really did a wrong in Halloween five and just disposed of her just to replace her with Tina who don't get me wrong. I like Tina. But it should have been Rachel in that role. And then the rest of the cast, again, amazing. I think George P. Wilbur did a good job of portraying the shape, a.k.a. Michael Myers, 
and he was terrifying. And the scene on the roof will always be one of my most favorite scenes in all of Halloween freaking history. It's just, it's so ridiculous too. Like when he slaps that little leg over <laughs> onto the roof to climb up and like is walking as Jamie and Rachel are struggling to even stand. Makes no sense, but just an amazing scene. I love this scene so much. But it pulls me back down to the ratings because the Rotten Tomato meter of 39% and the audience score of 53%. I did an episode last year where I ranked all 13 films, I believe, and I don't remember if that number is different or not now. I should have looked it up, but I'm just, I just think that it's unreal. This is one of those instances for me where if I were to see a tomato meter of 39%, I would, I don't agree that that's anywhere near that, especially in the horror community. I've, I've met so many people online i see so many like fandoms of halloween 4 that just like love 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 it that yes it's the critic but even like the audience score 53 percent, i don't believe is an accurate portrayal of like how much people really love this movie so we need to go out there and boost that audience score myself included on halloween 4 because that is incorrect and we need to fix it speaking of boosting scores and reviews it's time for the top three best and worst reviews for Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers on IMDb. Doing the f- top three best reviews first. Number one is titled Triumphant Rebirth. This was written in June 2007. This film marked the new beginning of Michael Myers and set the series back into business, most definitely, and I know that all Halloween fans will agree with me here. It has a wonderful plot, well done acting, some major jolts of suspense, and even a little bit of emotional drama within. My favorite part of this whole movie is the very last scene. I'm not spoiling it, but it just involves Jamie Lloyd, the niece of Michael Myers, the very very last shot of the whole movie to me is the most terrifying of all. It's the scariest thing that you could ever see in a horror movie. And it's not a death. You'll just have to see it, I guess. And there's like a winky, not emoji. It's like the parentheses semicolon thing. Um, I, I think this review is almost perfect, except um, let's, let's back up. I, did, there, I didn't think about the emotional drama within the movie until I read the review, and then I realized, yes, it is, and, and it, it is invoked that out of me every time I watch it too. When I think about poor little Jamie who lost her mom and dad in a car accident, and then she's with this new family, somehow everyone knows that she's the niece of Michael Myers. So then these bratty ass kids tease her through the hall and like Jamie's mommy's a mommy and like th- th- skeletons in her face. I'm going to tell you one thing right now. I'll tell you one thing right now. I always, even as a child, when watching this movie, would be like, I wish a motherfucker would. I wish a bitch would. I would have fucking mushed that kid's fucking mask so far into his face, but that's, I'm not condoning violence. I'm just saying, I'm just saying maybe impulse controls in my mind with certain things I need to work on. Um, But those kids were fucked up and I would have loved to have a scene with those little fuckers trick or treating. And I'm not saying that Michael needs to like murder them, but I think a scene with a satisfying like terror of them running into him would have sufficed for me. Just a little like, You got what was coming to you in a way. But anyway, and moving into the emotional drama again, Jamie being home, she's like hiding in her closet, holding her box with her mom's picture and like crying. It's just, it is very sad. And Danielle Harris at her young age did a really, really, really fantastic job. Like I can't say enough. Like I've seen like child actors. We all see child actors and we don't expect much from them. But this little girl, literally was in a movie where she needed to like dig really deep as a seven-year-old and try to evoke emotion of losing a parent. And like, that is something that no one, even as an adult is ready to do. Like I lost my mom at 17 
And that's 10 years older than this character is supposed to be. And I can't even tell you, like, there's no emotional prepping for that. I don't know if I would have been able to act on what that means. So, like, we have to, like, really give her, like, a lot of props for being able to pull it off because it was not cheesy. It was believable. And it's heartbreaking as an adult even now to watch it. It's like this poor child. Um, but other than that, the um, review says, like, the very last scene is the most terrifying. I can see why they feel that way. I was confused and not really excited about that. Like, I know that they keep touching this topic throughout the Halloween movies to the point where they even went ahead and did it in Halloween ends with Corey in a sense. And I'm just not about it. Like I love the Halloween movies. I love exploring different things, but at the end of the day, my main person is Michael Myers. And that's what I want. I want to see Michael Myers full power, full strength and his glory. I want old school chase scenes. Like that's what I want. And the end of the movie with Jamie, while an iconic scene didn't fully get realized in Halloween five. And so I'm not really sure. Like I'm not really sure what I feel like it just was just set up and left to the side. So I don't feel like it was done well. Moving on to the next best review for Halloween four is titled awesomely scary. This was written in September of 2005. This was the first Halloween movie I ever saw. And I must say, it was the scariest thing I ever laid eyes on. From start to finish, my heart was pounding. I'd never seen anything like it before, ever. This film was excellent. The first victim dying by getting a thumb through his skull was a little much, but the rest was fine. I mean, that's not a little much. You're in a fucking horror movie. Anyway. The nightmare scene is my favorite moment of the film. Same. One of the best scenes in the whole series. Oh, well, I agree. If only the film wasn't about to kill the series with films after it, H5, H6. If Akkad wasn't making the sequels, maybe that 10 years of crap he made with the curse, in parentheses, might have been better. The only thing that made me think, what the, with this film, is when Michael throws Loomis through the elementary school window, you can see see that the shape has uh, on an unaltered mask. Everything else is great. 10 out of 10. You can't give this thing a 10 out of 10 and then hawk, like trash talk it. Um, I love the fucking thumb and it's like, motherfucker, I can kill you and push. I have so much strength in my hand. So unrealistic after being in a coma for 10 years, but I can't even see you, but I'm just going to just shove my thumb through your fucking head. I thought, I love that. Like we want to see over the top unrealistic kills in especially movies that aren't here to make all the sense. Again, like I said, he shouldn't even be able to move, like let alone be in a coma for 10 years. Like, let's t- throw logic out the window. We're having a fucking horror movie here. It's not supposed to make the most sense. I don't think it was much. I don't agree with that. Second thing I do agree with, though, is the dream sequence. Again, we already talked about it, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time, but an amazing, amazing scene. Very well done. Moving on, um, everyone has their own opinions of H5 and H6. I really enjoy them. I am confused on how I'm trying to say that because I I, I get where people are upset about things, but um, the most thing that I can say about H6 is I was upset with the decision to recast Jamie, but also to impregnate her with Michael's child. It just turned into like a whole different kind of thing that I think we could have avoided. Other than that, I don't mind the curse of Thorn. I didn't mind Tommy Doyle being back. I like Paul Rudd. I didn't mind the Strode family in the Myers house. Like I thought it had a well thought out idea. Again, the Jamie part was like forced into, they could have done it differently and better, especially with Danielle Harris going through what she went through to get emancipated and everything for this role for them to not even acknowledge her worth. And we are still seeing that with women in Hollywood today. For instance, Nev Campbell, not, feeling she was being properly offered what she should have been offered for Scream 6. But other than that, the last thing I want to talk about with this review is with the unaltered mask, fucking hilarious. Like, 
hilarious. I'm like, is that Ben Dreamer? No. Um, it's just like a blonde. I'm like, I think I made a TikTok. I'm like, what? Who? I don't know who that man is. Like, I was just hilarious. Like, they just kept in. You know what? Fuck it. We forgot. I don't. I was not like haven't looked it up but i'm like they had to have forgotten they're like it's too late it's just there and i'm so glad it is because it's things like that in movies that remind us that these are people like us working on projects and artistic expressions and mistakes happen but we had to be a little more forgiving like it was a fun mistake it's like the cgi mask in h2o like it's just like what the fuck like i'm not looking for perfection i'm just looking for a good time (laughs) And now, I'm going to move on to the final best review of Halloween 4 on IMDb, titled, Michael Myers is Back. Everyone knows the John Carpenter horror classic Halloween, but it seems like very few ever speak fondly about the sequels that followed. Now, I know there were some really bad sequels, but Halloween 4 is actually a great film of the franchise, in my opinion. I lost my spot. Okay, bringing back Michael Myers was the smartest move they could have made. Not only did he come back, but he came back with a vengeance. If not familiar, the new characters can throw you off a bit, but the end result is in every way just as satisfying as the original. Jamie, portrayed by Danielle Harris, is the new target of Michael's rage, and he'll stop at nothing to get her. I would put this movie right up there with the first one. Uh, So this was written in April of 2023, so very recent which confused me because they said it seems like very few ever speak fondly about the sequels that followed and i do not agree i see people talking a lot about like the cult following for the curse of michael myers which also has like the uh director's cut which i can't find and i want to watch i've seen scenes but i just want to watch it and then there's the rob zombie stands like there's a lot of aside from 1978 fans especially of four and five as well. So that I'm not sure maybe they're not like immersed in the community the way that we are, but they should find it just at least for Halloween fans. Even if you're not into like all of horror and you're just a Halloween fan, that's fine too. I'm in a Facebook group for Halloween fans. Like you we're, we're out there. Find us. You'll find people that appreciate it just as much as you. Also, um, when they end it with, I would put this movie right up there with the first one. I completely agree. I think that they they did a great job bringing Michael back as the way that he was left off at the end of Halloween 2 because we know the Halloween 3, the season of the witch, is not even a part of this timeline in any way to the fact that where Halloween 1 is a movie in the movie. So they did their best to re to resurrect, no pun intended, but actually it is, not just Michael, but Michael and Dr. Loomis, they had to find a way to bring back main characters, like a protagonist and an antagonist from Halloween 1 or Halloween 2 that made sense, that people liked, and it wasn't going to be Jamie Lee Curtis. So bringing them both back when they both really had been confirmed dead at the end of Halloween 2, basically. There's no way that anyone really survives that. And that's where we get into the whole fun thing of nothing makes sense. Who gives a fuck? Bring me back, Michael. I don't care. It's the same thing of like, we knew when Halloween resurrection was coming out after he was decapitated in Halloween H show. We don't give a fuck. I don't care if he was a Frankenstein monster. Like it's ridiculous. We like ridiculous, or at least I do, but that concludes the top three best reviews. I'm going to move on to the top three worst reviews. Ugh. Now we all know that I'm biased. I love Halloween four. So we're just going to get through this together. The first one is titled, A Friday the 13th Wannabe. I, before I even read this fucking review, that infuriates me. The title itself infuriates me because, motherfucker, Friday the 13th literally, literally was a Halloween wannabe. Why do you think it's called Friday the 13th? Like, they were taking what the success of Halloween, which was the, a, a holiday or something that was a day, and made it in a slasher movie. And they ripped it off. They have said it. I love the Friday the 13th franchise. Don't get me wrong. Like, love it as well. Like, Michael, Freddy, Jason, you can't tell me shit about them. I don't give a fuck how terrible the movies are. I will see every single one. But don't ever call Halloween a Friday the 13th wannabe when it is 100% the other way around. Here's a review. 
With this installment of Halloween, you can tell that the writers wanted to make a Friday the 13th clone. Oh my god. Except that Friday the 13th films have balls and are generally fun. Are you fucking kidding? This has nothing. The entire film feels like it's a diet version of Friday the 13th, which it is. You want Halloween? Stick with the first three. The third one is underrated. This one, this one is a genetic, uh, genetic, (laughs) it's a generic, boring mess. Fuck you. Like, I just went on the rampage about your review. You make no sense. You don't know what you're talking about. And I'm just going to move on to the next worst review because I already said enough about this one. This one is titled Intensely Bad. Interesting, isn't it? Intensely Bad. This was written this month. So let's let's get into it. The only redeeming quality is Donald Pleasance. Tired and wheezy as he is, do not disrespect Dr. Motherfucking Loomis again. We're going to put that out there. <laughs> Tired and wheezy as he is, shows up. But this is dreadfully bad movie. We forgot a letter in there, but okay. The little girl is terrible. Her mugging and stilted delivery makes Dakota Fanning look like Meryl Streep. Dakota Fanning is fabulous. Anyway, the babysitter's stepsister seems to have gone to the same acting school of gaping as the girl in Jurassic Park. I'm starting to feel like this guy doesn't like women or kids or girls or all the above. But really, these dime a dozen slasher movies don't exist for the acting. Once in a while, something as good as the original Halloween comes along, though the supporting cast is often just as passable there, too. But audiences for this stuff aren't watching for the performances. So that means the rest has to be good, and it isn't. This was made by a director who doesn't seem to understand much about, oh, camera setups and blocking the actors, nor an editor who understands anything about pacing. Thus, some scenes will flash by in a moment before your brain has a chance to figure out what happened, while others will drag on interminably, like the slowest escape from a mass killer in a house in the history of movies. Sadly, they made yet another one with the cast after this. You are such a pretentious fucking prick. They don't know anything about editing or camera. Like, what the fuck do you do? What do you do? I can't stand that. Like, now you're not even, like, just shitting on the movie. You're shitting on, like, the entire production of it, which, like, I don't, I'm not technical, but I think, like, it was fine, like, blocking and stuff. Like, are you just trying to show off and then, again, like, you're writing a review basically saying you're not a fan of these kinds of movies because you just keep shitting on the characters and the types of movies. And why the fuck are you watching movies? Are you literally watching movies to try to be, like, a know-it-all and then make write reviews and hope that somebody's going to be like, this person knows what they're talking about. Nobody gives a fuck. We're not reading your reviews to know if you know what the fuck fucking blocking characters or actors are like i don't fucking care that's it that's all i'm gonna say and i only found two really bad reviews for halloween 4 so that says something as well and with that being said that concludes this episode's top three best and worst reviews on imdb let's talk about what we really want to talk about which is what I liked the most about Halloween 4. If you haven't caught on, what I liked the most is the relationship between Jamie and Rachel. There would be no Halloween 4 if one of the two actors were removed from the equation. What makes Halloween 4 work as well as it does is not only the actors portraying like bringing to life Jamie and Rachel, but the actual characters and the way they were written for Jamie and Rachel. It's what brings the concept of Laurie Strode babysitting Tommy Doyle and then turns the dial up to a fucking thousand is like, okay, Rachel's taking her sister, her foster sister trick or treating, who is the niece of Michael Myers. And she has to protect her for the remainder of the, of the night. It's like more than, you know, anything that you could think of. So I think that that's an amazing, amazing part of this movie and why I love it so much. What I liked the least, I thought about it and I thought about it. And the reason I picked it is because I, 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 I honestly felt this way before everyone else, not before everyone else, but like along with everyone else, which is the mask. 
The mask just it wasn't the best. It's not the worst. It's not the worst. It's not Halloween five. Like I, I, each one has its own thing, but like thinking about it, like there's something iconic about that first mask that just brought a certain thing to the Halloween franchise, and that I, in my opinion, was never done as well until the Rob Zombies and the David Gordon Green trilogies. Those masks, I loved. Think they 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 did a really good job. So if I had to pick, like as much as I'm excited to own them all, because I love all the movies. The the mask was weird in the movie. Now that we have got that done, let's take a moment and back up and answer this week's terrifying trivia question. Now, again, this week's terrifying trivia question is a multiple choice. The question was, what was the name of Jamie's dog? Was it A, Max, B, Buddy, C, Sunday, or D, Rocky? Yes, I came up with these names all by myself. Um, (laughs) But if you guessed C, Sunday, you are correct. Max, I threw in there because that was the name of the dog that he also killed her dog in Halloween 5. So, like, Michael's just killing Jamie's fucking dogs left and right. But, like, poor Sunday. We didn't see either dog get killed, which is fine. I don't want to. But, yeah, poor little Sunday. He looks so sweet. I don't know what kind of dog, but I remember they were white. It was it was sad. Anyway, that was this week's terrifying trivia. I wonder – let me know if you got it right or wrong. Go file a follow on Facebook and let me know. Now – with every kind of slasher movie. It's super fun with every movie, but especially slasher movies. Everybody wants to know the kill count. So how many kills were in Halloween 4? I went over to a familiar site, the Dead Meat Fandom, to look up the answer. And the number of kills in Halloween 4 are 15. It's impressive. If we go back to the first Halloween, just Halloween 1, I think, let's just count, we had Annie, Bob, Linda, the dog, the gas station person, so maybe like five. So we just doubled, like got 10 more on top of that count. So like Myers was on a rampage and one of my personal favorite kills in Halloween 4 is the sheriff's daughter. He's sitting there portraying to be the deputy watching the house when she's in there and she's like, lights the match. She's like, I thought we have some coffee while we wait for the Calvary and like lights the match. And then you see him like twisted up in the light and then Myers is up with a shotgun. And you're like, damn, he's got a gun. He's about to blow her the fuck away. And he doesn't even shoot her. He uses it to impale her through the fucking gut into the door and leaves her hanging there. And, That just goes to tell you that the rage he has, because he doesn't just want to kill you. He, like, wants to kill you a certain way. Like, he could have just shot her. He literally could have shot her, but he had a weapon like that and decided to still impale her. So I thought that was one of the most creative kills for Myers in that movie. But we've reached the part of the show where it is time to do my final rating and review for Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers. So this week's rating system is going to be jack-o'-lanterns because it's fucking Halloween weekend, everybody. And carve your pumpkins, put a candle in it, put on a Halloween movie, put on Halloween 4. And this is why. I rate it it a 9 out of 10 jack-o'-lanterns. Again, it would have been a 10 out of 10, but the mask was, you know, could have been done better. My final review for Halloween 4 is... Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers is one of the rare times a horror movie franchise was able to redeem itself after a disappointing previous entry. While Halloween 3's Season of the Witch would later go on to become a cult classic, at the time, viewers wanted more Michael and Halloween 4 did not disappoint. This movie has all the elements needed for a true Halloween movie. Badass final girls, creative kills, chilling atmospheres, and Michael Myers. 
If you want to watch Halloween 4, Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers is streaming now on AMC+. That concludes this week's Spooky Sunday episode of The Horror Within Me. Thank you all so much for joining me. Happy Halloween, everybody. We will return with new episodes in November. I don't have a theme and I don't have an episode, but there will be one. Everyone stay safe out there and stay spooky. Thanks again for joining me on another episode of The Horror Within Me. Please rate and review the show on whatever platform you're listening in from. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button to get notified when new episodes drop. I'm also on all major social channels, so be sure to check out my website, www.thehorrorwithinme.com, for all those links. And until next time, my friends, stay spooky! Spooky!